my first impressions of Pavel were just big hair. I walked in, I just saw this very tall man with big hair, and he wasn't at all how I expected him. You know, um, I was imagining this kind of little shriveled Polish guy, and he was this kind of big guy, you know, and he was really charming and um, very, very down to earth and um, very mild mannered, and I liked him immediately. I'd never done any improvisation before and they wanted me to, I think, and I didn't know what to expect. My agent just said, just go in, you're going to improv a few scenes. And I went in and Pavel was there with his little camcorder and <laughs> sort of gave me a few scenarios. And then I just did it with the casting director and um, he stopped me a few times and we tried something else. And yeah, it was fun. I, I thought I was rubbish. I mean, I came out, I thought there's no way. I laughed on my way out. There's no way I've got that. There's a scene where she, it's quite early on in the film, where she brings Mona to her mansion for the first time and she's kind of wanting to show off and show how luxurious, you know, she is and whatever. And she puts on Eddie Piaf, this Eddie Piaf CD, and she dances with Mona and she's become this old sort of French roux and she sort of turns into this very romantic figure and she loves this image of herself, like totally in control. and wants Mona to be in, in awe of her. And the scene actually had just allowed me to do that. It's really, um, it's just full of life and soul and it, it's fantastic. So I think, and that was the one that worked. And the music was so brilliant. It was this really sort of romantic, powerful song. And, um, and it's called um, La Foule, which means like to be swept away by the crowd or something like that. And that's what it was. And it gets faster and faster and faster. And it's sort of spinning around the room and getting more and more out of control. and. And that's what they're all about, Mona and Townsend. It's that kind of loss of control and um, abandonment, you know. For Townsend, with Phil, she sees him as, you know, she sees him probably as the man he was before, and she's kind of intrigued by this, here by his ability to lay everything on the table and just completely turn over a new leaf. Because underneath, she knows she's screwed up she knows that she's damaged and is frightened of doing that herself and um but really i mean she probably just fancies him really <laughs> it's like and i think she sees him as a challenge that she could it's a it's her own little personal victory with him she wants to try and test him she's really lost underneath it all it's not that she's a com she, she is really a complete bitch you know a lot of the time and it's all sort of about personal gains and personal sort of little victories. But, um, you know, she, she's completely abandoned by her family and her mother's an alcoholic and she's never there. She's off doing a play in Scarborough and her father is whoring his way around the office and she's left on her own in the house. And, um, I mean, if you could see that house, it, it's just, it's, it's massive and it's eerie and it's a bit spooky in a way. And, um, I think she is a girl with a massive imagination who's left on her own too much. And that's kind of a dangerous combination, I think. In a way, she sees everything in Mona and Mona becomes her everything, you know, and um, she sees this, there's a certain danger and an edge about Mona that Tamsin doesn't have. and. Um, Mona's bravery sort of manages to sort of seep into her after a while and she likes that and she likes what Mona brings out in her. And um, she's, she's like a little pet to Tamsin. She's so sweet and sort of, you know, Tamsin can manipulate her and she knows that Mona's besotted with her and kind of plays on that. But I think um, for Mona it's more that she throws herself into, into the relationship with all her heart but with Tamsin she throws herself into it with all of her head and she's the best method actress you could have, you know, in every situation, in every kind of intimate, you know, lovely situation that they have. It's more of a sort of act with her. It's more of a, um, that she pretends it's sort of a scene out of something. That's how I see her, that she's not always completely truthful with Mona. In fact, she's probably never truthful with Mona, apart from the few moments where she'll let it slip, you know. Pavel had, um, the greatest insight for, excuse me, bullshit than I've ever seen. You know, it's amazing. He he knows when you're acting and he knows when you're not. And he's um, 
he's wonderful on moments. He'll create moments rather than trying to maybe make the whole scene clear. He'll find just moments in it that are just beautiful, and he'll tap into that with just such insight, really, into what works and what doesn't. And um, and I've never felt so real in anything before. I mean, I guess all the other stuff I've done, it's been, you know, that very s strict script and you stick to it and you learn your lines a week before you go in and you know exactly what you're doing um, before you go in. And with Pavel, you know, I'm driving into work and I don't know which scenes I'm doing really. I don't know what I'm gonna be saying. And so in that way, it's so much in the moment all the time.